So, again, one of the things that we talk about is mentorship. We talk about a guy, like I said, this guy, Michael Flanagan. So, and again, Michael Flanagan is, is my son's godfather, along with Coach Brian Norwood, who's, you know, defense coordinator at UCLA. Yeah. Um, coach me at Penn State as well. Bro, this man, bro, I was charged with assault. I remember. And the assault was based upon the fact of like, you know, just me going run get into a situation where I was just like, you know, walked into the girl that I was dating in, you know, a situation. It was a, and I was nineteen years old, eighteen years old, man. I just I, just, yeah. I, I, I it was something that I would never do. I, I'm just not built like that. But imagine now you got a guy, you're you're at ESPN radio. I mean ESPN, ESPN, and they're like, this kid's got kicked off the team, he's charged with aggravated assault for a fight with this guy. All this stuff, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm at a rehab at that point because the the you no know, the judge and everybody is telling me you gotta go to a rehab. Like my lawyer's like, you go to the rehab, the Karen Foundation and Warner's Lopez, but Liza Manelli was I shouldn't say that. Liza Manelli was there. She's she, she's go ahead. she was there. <laughs> go ahead. Like, she did a whole concert, bro. Like okay. the graduation show. Like I was like, oh, she she still at 80, still doing it. Like, but I went to that rehab and all this stuff. And I, that's when I got introduced to this guy, Michael Flanagan, when I was at the rehab because one of his buddies was there. Okay. And he knew of me because of Penn State. Bro, he knew my situation. At this time, this guy has three kids, a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, and an 11-year-old. Katie, Joseph, Patrick, my, my, brothers and, my brothers and sisters. Literally, no, skin doesn't matter. Those are my, I love them. He then brings this black guy, kid, into mm -hmm. his home and makes me a part of his family and tells me the first time he met me he says this to me mo i'm a square i don't give a fuck about football i care about no, you as a person hell yeah so you go to the nfl i don't care about none of that i want to be able to talk to you later on in life when you have your own kids and say you know what continue to be positive continue to do this the whole time that I'm in this guy's house living with him. Uh, living, I was living with him, bro. Mm -hmm. I was living with him when they had the house that was a small house to when they ended up getting the $1.1 million house. Uh, he, he, got, he got money. He didn't money more. With the $1.1 million. I was, I was in that house. You know what I'm saying? And then the fact of the matter is his kids going to the Hill School. I think... The, all this, like, and it's, it's so crazy because like, we're talking about mentorship and it's like these, these kids, they need the mentorship even as young adults, when like kids, high school. Middle so school. let me ask you, why do why do you think it's a hard? Why do you think that's hard for people to even to even want to do that? To even want to be a mentor? Because just like you said, the power in just saying I just care about you as a person, right? That changes the world for so many people. So like, why is it such a hard thing for people to understand the importance of? I need somebody to check in. I need these, the kids that I work with at Hartford. You know the circumstance. Right. They're going through crazy stuff. Right. They just want to know that you're there, that you care. The thing is, people don't want to be there. You know what it is, though? I think, too, I think a lot of it you know, deals with this. A lot, and, and you know what? I shouldn't say a lot of people, but the majority of people, they want something out of it. It's crazy. You get so much more in return if you're just doing it out of kindness. Right. But the thing is, and that's if you why. You show favor, you'll be a favorite. Like, the, I don't the know the why. Thing people is, that's, that's why there's so many people. That's why I feel like there's so many people that are not mentoring because it's like, like they, they okay, okay, you got you got a kid that's a potential athlete going here to they they mess up one time, you don't hear from that. They don't yeah. you gotta bro, there's guys that I talked to that Kent Pope was my parole officer when I was a kid. I talked to him still to this day. He just retired. Cause they care. Coach Abrams. Coach John Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Coach he was the CO. In the in Harvard detention when I was in Harvard detention, I didn't know that. Just spoke to him the other day. He's the, he he he's the reason why John Jenkins is coming on this on the on this show. That's crazy. I used to work at Harvard detention. That's crazy. Go ahead. Yeah, I was there, bro. I was wild, bro. I was, <laughs> bro, I was yeah, as a kid, like I said, as a kid, as a kid, I was I was wild boy, bro. But that's what you gotta say. You got a guy like Cat. What what guy takes a kid from juvie into their house? 
Not many. No. Nah. Not many. So again, I think a lot of it is a lot of people, they, they want something out of it, but again, that's why I'm glad we're doing this because we got to get more guys to just be mentors. Just to be like, you know what? I don't need nothing out of this. Let you me, know what? Let me ask you a question. Do you, so people who you share these stories with, black, white, because I feel like I'm not, there's no shade to anybody, but I feel like even in college, you said you had somebody helping you. I had a teacher, Joan Capaluco. She was like a mom to me, Beth mm -hmm. Kahn. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what it was about just white females or white males, when they see someone who has potential beyond just the sport, beyond just that, they go above and beyond. Like I used to train their kids. Like he's like, you yeah. play football. Like, like for you and your experience, was it more, did you see from white side, black side, like who was like really going above and beyond? Well, like I'm gonna help you no matter what. Well, that's why we have to change that. We have to change that mode. And I think what we're doing right now to do that and get a lot, to get a lot more uh, minorities to be more of a mentor. Because again, it is true. A lot of, you know, and I don't know what, what it, know what it is but like a lot a lot of a lot of you know i had a lot more white mentors bro than black it's crazy i mean i had i had but i had, had a few of them i had them i had them i had i had coach brian norwood you know i had i had those guys man but you know when you talk about you know taking you into your home doing the sharing with your family well you know what when i got when i got kicked off of King of penn state for the situation i wasn't i wasn't involved i wasn't a player i wasn't on ncaa none of that so so, you know, Coach Norwood understood that. And I didn't, Coach Norwood, because at that point, I was at Pen in Pennsylvania. No money, no nothing. He moved me into his house. Before, that's mm -hmm. after I met um, Michael Flanagan. Mm -hmm. But before that, I lived with Coach, with Coach Norwood for six months, like in his house. See? I was the first person to go be in his house drunk. He punished me, bro. He got, I he bet got he did. so mad. Yeah, because Christian, he was so mad. I went out, party, came back to his house, right? And uh, he was like, you were the first human being to be drunk in my house. He had me doing chores. I, did, I haven't did a, didn't do a chore. Bro, I'm like, first of all, I'm, I'm in college. I'm not doing chores. He had me doing chores. I thought I was going to sleep on the couch yeah. the rest of the whole day, watching Ooh. TV, play some video games with Jordan and Gabe. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, he's like, you need structure. You need something. Yeah. No, you about to go. You about to go do some chores. Yeah. But that was a but that was a guy who took me into his house, and his family. He had five kids. Of course, Nora had five kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brought me into his home, man. But again, we have to get more of those black mentors, and we have again. I feel like we have, and again, this is why we're doing this too, and why we have these stories to talk about that stuff, so that, for example, we can mm -hmm. we can get more 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 people like us to do that type but of that's, stuff. But that's the important piece of when I'm talking about I'm doing the leadership and the guest speaker and the summits. The biggest piece about that is I'm no shade to anybody else. I'm only looking for black and brown, yellow. I'm only looking for minorities because mm -hmm. you need to be able to see yourself in those positions. Right. So if you have a Senator McCory come, I can see myself being him. Mm -hmm. If you have um, Dr. Chang, who's the head of the, one of the departments at UConn, I can see myself in that person. Right. That's the whole point of all of this. Like, I'm black and brown, so you can see yourself at the next level. And if they can have that connection, why not? That's something you can always go back to. Right. I'm in college right now. I'm looking at some of these things. Do you have any ideas where I can make it? Mm -hmm. Things I can start off with. Mm -hmm. I'm doing journalism. I'm doing this. Like, mm -hmm. that's the important piece. Like, we don't have that. Right. So we got to build that up. And that's why I really just went into it. Like, because of my daughter, I was like, yo, she's going to be 10 times better than me. Mm. Like, I, there's no way. Bro, like, she's going to be I, 10 I, times bro, better than I live for my kids, bro. Like, my son and my daughter. First of all, my son. First of all, this boy. Before you say about your son, my daughter speaks at all my events. She's right. been doing it since she was five. I play no games. Wow. All my events. My son can't speak at the event because he'll just start dancing and stuff. He's, he's Who different. cares? Put he's him on the stage. He's light skin, bro. Like, don't matter. Let him be, yo, let him be great. You got to let him be great, bro. He be wilding, bro. Like, you see him on Facebook? <laughs> I'm like, yo, what is wrong yo, with this boy? Let him be great. Nah, let him be great. Don't yo, my, yo, my cousin Calvin, yo, uh, uh, you know my cousin Calvin, right? Yeah, yeah. This, this yo, I be, yo, I be getting mad. <laughs> my cousin came over, right, one night, one day. Had a family where my girls cooking food and stuff. And uh, my son was, like, running around the house, right, chasing everybody, whatever it case may be. And, you know, my son, he got the hair. He got, he got that Italian white boy hair, right? So his shit is like, <laughs> sorry, his hair is, like, all crazy. But when he's sweating and stuff, it gets wild. My cousin was like, yo, <laughs> why is his son running around here with, with the hair of Michael Myers? I was like, yo, don't ever disrespect my son again, bro. <laughs> he said my son got the hair of Michael Myers, dog. That's crazy. I don't, yo, but the thing is, like I said, my son, like, but I, I live for my kids, man. I love my son, my daughter, bro. Like, yo, when they see each other, bro, it's like, yo, it's, it's crazy. It's like the chemistry they have, bro. It's crazy. But you talk about Mitchell. 
One thing that I do too, it's like my daughter's mother. We and we got this is one thing that we have to start doing too as as minorities, black and brown. If you have a relationship or a son or someone with, with, with another person, you have to put the kids first. Period. We don't do that enough, man. And the thing is, it's like with me and my girl and my, my daughter's mother, I all I made sure I said to them, set them both down. Yo, y'all gonna get along. Because at the end of the day, it's about Ariana and MJ. Okay, so let me, Bro, my, let me throw a twist on that. How much time? I mean, yo, my, my girl and my daughter's mother, they be texting each other. I'm like, yo. What you have? What I, is going on? So, so this is the flip side. So you got to think about it like this, too. Sometimes the other side don't want to do that. Right. I, I, yeah, yeah. So I, I have that same energy all day. Right. Her mom, new family, whatever else, I invite the kids to all the Dunkin' Donuts events. You want right. to come? I do all that stuff. Yep. But the issue, not this is just purely just off of my ex was white. Mm. Since being divorced for like three and a half years, mm. everything has been about race. Right. Going through that divorce process, every, I was a deadbeat dad. I was uneducated. I was a thug. I was a drug dealer. I was a gangster. Who, did, who said all this? This is what they were saying about me. Your daughter's mother? Yes, bro. So when I'm telling you, I was still showing love. I never That's stopped showing love. Crazy. Every stereotype you can say, I'm like, yo, I was just on TV on NBC. Like, my like, program just got interviewed by Channel 3. Like, what are you talking about? Like, drug like, like you're uneducated? I'm like, I have a master's degree and I'm getting my second one. The, 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 no, what the fuck? Like, what are you, what are but, like, it was, any, it was any stereotype. So now, like, this is, I'm behind it. My daughter, because of that type of bigoted language, mm. is struggling with her own identity, being accepted. Mm. She doesn't feel accepted by her own mother. That's no matter how much we show love, it doesn't matter because you still have somebody. Because of what she was saying about you. Saying about, she says she, it to my daughter. Uh, she's a, yeah, 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 bro. That's so cool, bro. Told my daughter she was black from the knees down. So what you're talking about, I would love to have. Even with all that going on to this day, I would love to have that situation. What I would love mean? to be. What the does that mean? You're black from the knees down. What the f like? Yeah, bro. Like so. That's crazy. So even with all that, I would still always show love, no matter what, because my daughter needs to see that from one side. Right. So no matter what, so I hear you. I would love to be able to do that. Yeah, bro. I'm, and again, I'm. And, and that's, I'm Sometimes you know, it's I, just. You know what? I'm gonna I'm pray for that. You know what I'm saying because you know that's that's needed. But again, it's just you know. Sometimes it's just again, it, again, it is hard to have that. You know what I'm saying? But, but I, again, some I, people I, don't know how to. Some people struggle with putting kids first. And I'm gonna take it to even step further. There's educators who have that same mindset who are in these. You know, in this inner city, in New Haven, in Hartford, in mm -hmm. Bridgeport, mm -hmm. white educators who are doing the same thing to our kids. So if you got somebody doing this to you at your house, you come to a teacher doing the same stuff to you, that's why I do all of this. Right. I'm going to prepare you for life. Right. I'm going to teach you how to move, how to do all these different things. My kids are telling me, this is your hero's journey. We're going to make a cheat code. 